and welcome back to the Vanier Woodshop. I'm Mr. Dakinowicz and today we're going to talk about the jointer. So, after you've used the chop saw to cut your material to length, um, we're going to come to the, to the jointer and the jointer is going to make it flat. So what the jointer does is it takes material and it creates a reference face and it also creates a reference edge. So we can use, we're going to only ever machine two sides. So this is our face of our board. This is the edge of our board, is the skinny way. And then of course we have the end of the board, which you don't really have to worry about right now. But as a side note, you can never joint the end grain on a board. You can only ever use it to joint a board this way or this way. One thing that you really want to remember when you're using the jointer is everything needs to be a minimum of 12 inches long or 305 millimeters. The reason for that, we're going to talk about when we get to the planer but we want to make sure that our material is still over one foot long or over 305 millimeters. We're going to talk really quickly about grain direction. Um, this probably could have its own video, but I will try and do this in the simplest form. The way that the jointer works is if we take out this little safety device so that we know that it's not going to turn on without its magnetic key, we can pull it back. And what we have in here are some blades. And our blades spin around really, really quick. There's about 120 razor blade sharp um, knives that spin and they're rotating towards us or towards the back of the machine, which means we're always going to feed from our right to our left or from the front to the back. <coughs> Excuse me. So when we look at our grain direction, because the blade is spinning this way, what we want is the grain to be headed towards the bottom. So. I know we always talk, we've talked a few times in these videos, we never use Sharpies to demo wood, but I'm going to show you really quickly where our grain is going on this particular board, and it looks something like this. So you can now see pretty clearly that our grain is pointing down, so as our blade is spinning, it's going to chip out that way. That's what we want. The reason why, which is kind of hard to explain, but if we were to push it through the wrong way, the blade has the potential to chip out or rip out our material. So the first thing we're going to do is joint our face. We're going to call it a reference face. So we're going to choose the side. We're going to look down at if there is any bow or any curve to this board. We're going to put it to, so our two ends touch so it doesn't rock. So in this case, this board's going to go down. Looks like that. We're going to push through this way. Again, we have grain direction heading downwards, so this is the front. I'm going to put the safety key back in, twist it. We're always going to use push sticks on this machine. These become your surrogate hands when you're using this machine. I have a right-handed one that I really like and a left-handed one. We can use the left-handed one to kind of hold the material down and in towards the fence. Again, we have a table. This is our outfeed table. This side being our infeed table, and this is our fence. We always want to be firmly onto the table, and we want to be firmly pressed against the fence. This has a nice hook on it, so it catches the end and pushes through. We never want our hands to travel directly over the blade. When I have push sticks, even if the blade was exposed and my push sticks slipped, I'm going to hit my push stick onto the blade, not my hand. The only time that you can use this without push sticks as if our material is taller than the fence and I will be very honest with you even in those cases now at home or here by myself I will still use a push stick I've just gotten so used to it and that's my plan for you as well so we have our on and our off we're going to turn this on we're going to hold it nice and tight to the fence So we can see we still need to do more jointing on that side. So now that we can see, you can see my Sharpie's even been removed. It's nice and smooth. The symbol that we're going to use for this is we're going to actually use the symbol of a fish. Looks just like that. This is our standard symbol for a reference face. Why it's a fish, I still don't know, but I know that this is used worldwide to represent our reference face. 
Now that we know that this is nice and flat, it's perfect in fact, it doesn't move at all, we can use this as our reference face to rest against the fence and now we're going to hold that in and if you can see closely it actually moves around a bit. What we want to do is hold that tight to our fence and then push it through. We're going to use the grain direction again to save us and keep it going down and we'll cut that edge. So I'm going to hold this in with my front push stick and I'm going to push along the back. So I still need another pass. I'm going to check again. It looks like I still could use one more. I'm going to hang my push sticks back up so the next person can find them. But now what I have is a reference face and a reference edge. The way that I'm going to demo the reference edge is I'm going to put two lines kind of making an arrow pointing towards my reference face. So this way, now, if I was working on a project with somebody else and I had marked it like this, when the next person came along, they would know that I had already machined my reference face and I'd machined my reference edge. Everybody knows that that's what these particular markings mean. So that's how we know for sure that this is done. Some things that we want to make sure that we point out when we're using this machine, we want to make sure that when we're approaching it, we're taking a balanced stance. I don't want to stand way back here and try and push something through leaning, nor do I want to start by trying to pull something through. I want to walk along with the material and provide so that I'm balanced. There's some buttons on the back. There's one that says this one, really big. Um, the nice thing about that is that's the one that we move and we can slide our table forward or back. And then we tighten it up. The other one we're not going to touch because that adjusts whether this stays square. Every morning just about I check it to make sure it's square and then we don't adjust it throughout the day. The other thing to note is that we have our infeed table. We can adjust the infeed table but right now it's set at taking off just under a sixteenth of material. That works really well for in the classroom because if it's that way we just do more than one pass. We never want to change that and we never, ever, ever, never, ever adjust the outfeed table. That would change everything it takes a couple hours to actually set that up to be perfect. And if that gets changed, the whole thing doesn't really work at all. So those are our main points. Thanks for watching our video on the jointer. If you have any questions. Um, please don't use this machine. Please come and ask me if you're at all worried or wondering what you should do or shouldn't do. Um, I'm here. Please ask me. I'm happy to show you this one in person. Again, it's a bigger machine. It's something that you want to make sure you're comfortable with before you use. Have a great day.